Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev and today we have something amazing courtesy of Hyundai, the brand new Tucson top of the range 2 litre turbo diesel. But first things first, let's check out the highlights of today's show. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we take a look at the Hyundai Tucson, Korea's answer to the fierce soft order contest in the used car segment. We check out its design and styling, practicality, engine performance, and its value for money preposition against its well established rivals like the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV. Catch this and much, much more only on Cars with Big Boy Trev this Sunday at 5 pm only on NTV. Welcome to Kazi Big Boy Trev Extra. My name is Big Boy Trev. It's all about the news and reviews from across the world. Now, Hi guys, my name is Birige and you're here listening to CBBT. We are here in location in Johannesburg for, of course, now the culmination of the Daring Africa campaign that saw a team of Nissan Navaras travel from Roslyn in South Africa all the way up to Cairo in Egypt to showcase the capability of these Nissan Navaras which are built in Africa. What else was there for people in the market? So I've just spoken to someone from Nissan South Africa who has explained now why they were doing the Daring Africa campaign and what that means for East Africa in general and Kenya. Jordi Villa, President of Nissan Africa and pleased to be with you today. Okay. Okay. The thing I want to say, it's an uh, Africa generated idea. Uh, with uh, the idea to uh, put together all Africa, uh, African countries. So it's a bit of a metaphor and a reality. We want to do more cars built in Africa for Africa. We want to do more trade in between the countries of Africa, business of automotive and other. And in reality, that message we pass through. Together, it's through as Nissan, uh, to bring back this idea of the one road that connects um, South Africa to the North Africa, in this case, uh, Cairo or uh, Egypt in any case, uh, which is very uh, important because it shows also our commitment uh, to, the, to the continent. Uh, more, moreover, I have to say, it was um, a way to, um, to prove and to show to the world, to ourselves and to the world, on the quality and reliability of our vehicles. We did all these legs without any single problem, both on the Navara and on the X-Trail. And I think that's important because it ties up to our DNA as brand, but also to the necessities and the needs and the expectation of the customers in, in Africa in general, and certainly in Kenya. This, of course, is a reminder that the Nissan Navara comes from a long line of Nissan vehicles that we know and love in Kenya. Or coming all the way from the Datsun, the D1200, the D12 that people are used to, of course, the fantastic, legendary Atoti, and that has morphed now into the Navara, which is now available as a single cab and a double cab, Crown Motors in Mombasa Road, Samir Business Park. So give them a, a, a visit one of these days and see which of the range that has now been expanded can fit you, your business, and your life. In our ongoing series of choosing the best soft order in the used car segment, we take a closer look at the Hyundai Tucson. Question is, is it a viable alternative to the current segment leaders? Let's find out. So guys, today on Cars of Big Boy Trev, we are sampling a familiar brand, the Hyundai Tucson. And I can tell you for a fact, it is playing in a category where there's so much competition. We previously reviewed the Volkswagen Tiguan All Space. Also, we've done the Mazda CX-5, but the question is, what has Hyundai done to enhance the package of the brand new Hyundai Tucson. So this is the 2021 version of the Hyundai Tucson and we're going to start this review by taking a look at the minor changes that Hyundai have done to ensure that this particular vehicle offers absolute value for money. We start with the front profile design as you can see. This particular grille, honeycomb, hexagonal, of course with this uh, stainless steel plastic trim gives this car that you know, premiumness that you saw design. Of course, there's that color-coded bumper with this black strip, the bottom lip of the bumper, again denoting that this particular car is sporty enough and of course still is able to go and do a bit of off-roading, which is very important in this particular segment. And as you can see, of course the headlamps have been enhanced, trapezoidal and they're wrapping all the way around with the LED daytime running lights just to give this car that signature look that everybody is doing from Volkswagen to Mazda and many others in this particular category. Again, the design face again, very Hyundai fluid motion as they call it in the design language and you know Peter Shire 
who was in charge of Volkswagen for many, many years, have now employed this particular design on this particular car. Makes it look amazing. Now, as you can see, moving to the side profile again, a lot of Hyundai a signature design. As you can see, fluidity in motion. These lines, these board lines on the bonnet, and of course, extends all the way to this particular fender. Now, it also runs from this wheel arc over here, extends all the way this hip line to the back, again denoting performance and power. That is something so important. And not forgetting this particular black cladding that's on the fender, goes away to the door seal, all the way to the back again, denoting that this particular car can do a little bit of off-roading if you're a person who likes doing a bit of short road trips to up country. Again, this Tucson is a car for you. Of course, as you can see, we cannot forget this chrome strip again, denoting it's premium enough. So Hyundai have taken time to develop and design this particular vehicle so that it has that premium look and feel that's now in the category of soft roaders. Now, as you move to the back, you can see what Hyundai have done. They have tried to create a sporty image of the Tucson. Again, the sloping roof line comes all the way down and of course has infused the diffuser that extends all the way to this rear tailgate. Again, infused the body, still giving this car that Jane Sequoia and showing that it's still a sporty crossover. And of course, you can see the subtle design touches that Hyundai have done. They've added a plain black finish on the lower part of this rear diffuser, again giving this car that Jane Sequoia we keep on talking about. It matches the windscreen that is darkened out again. Black and white, I'm telling you. What a better combination to put in such a car of this stage. And now as you can see, on the rear tailgate again, it's tapered off with an edge over here. And of course, you have the massive Hyundai logo, which by the way means two people shaking hands. By the way, that's that what the Hyundai logo means. And of course, you do have the letters Tucson and the H-Track, which is the all-wheel drive version of this particular car in two-liter turbo diesel that's on the engine. We're going to discuss that much, much later. And the lower part of the bumper as well, you do have this bottom diffuser over here, it's blackened out again, giving this car the Jan Sequoia, also telling you that this particular car can do a bit of off-roading. But it's time to find out if the cabin matches the profile, the styling cues of the exterior. Let's step inside and see what the cabin is all about. Now, let's take a look at this particular dashboard. As I said earlier, it's got the forward cab design, which basically means placing the dashboard further away from the occupants to create an illusion of space. And we've seen that with the Mazda CX-5 and the Volkswagen Tiguan all space I previewed earlier on. Again, the design of the dashboard is two-tone with a rib in the middle. So basically on top you have soft touch plastic. In the middle, you do have a section where you have also soft touch plastic. And again, it's stitched leather. And then of course, to complement that whole rib is the air vents with stainless steel. They're rectangular with that stainless steel strip that gives this car that Jeanne sais quoi, we keep on talking about on cars with big boot And of course, at the lower part is again an area where you do have the glove box and also all the certain elements of the design face of this particular car. It has actually a V motif design, which is very interesting. It shows that this case was actually thinking when they're designing this particular vehicle. Now, the highlight of this particular dashboard is this. 10-inch tablet-style design multimedia information system, which is HD high definition and can play quite a number of things. And of course, it supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. So basically, it's an extension of your phone that helps you to improve your connectivity and your productivity while on the road. That is something amazing that Hyundai have done. So making sure that you're able to pair your phone, you're able to read your messages, send messages, call people, I mean, do maps, navigation, Everything that your phone can do is now capable courtesy of this multimedia information system. And top it up, of course, you have some piano black finish and some stainless steel trim on top just to give this car that Janice Sequoia we keep on talking about. Now, the audio system can support radio, which is standard, and then Bluetooth connectivity, USB connectivity, and an auxiliary port, which actually find right here if you're a person who loves the Apple uh, domain. If you love Apple products and you're able to key in your iPod and listen to music and do all sorts of things courtesy of this particular system. Again, navigation that works here in Kenya. And of course, you can pair your phone and you're able to pick calls and use voice control as standard in this particular vehicle. Now, let's move right below it. You do have the dual zone climate control. In this particular category, not everybody is doing dual zone climate control. So Hyundai have actually included the dual zone climate control system in this Tucson to ensure that the passenger and the driver have own individual settings so they're able to remain cool, calm, and collected at any given time. 
and obviously right below it to do oh, to actually have a, a bit of settings as well you have two 12 volt sockets you can power your devices so your ipad your laptop or whatever it is a usb port and of course you do also have wireless charging right here that is now coming in as standard so if your phone has wireless charging then you'll be able to charge your device quite easily in the hyundai tucson And let's move on to the gearbox console. This is where you see the traditional gearbox, which has Tiptronic functionality to allow you to select and deselect gears quite easily to explore the full potential of the two-liter turbo diesel that's in front. Right, I'm going to show you that later on. And obviously, there's no handbrake. So basically, what they've done, they've reduced the number of buttons. So you do have electronic pack brake that comes as standard. And of course, heel descent control, auto hold during traffic. You don't need to step on the brake all the time. And of course, the different driver modes. So sporty, comfort, and eco. Economy. I'm going to toggle through those settings. I'm going to see how the engine response is with this particular setting. And of course, you can see the two cup holders, one big, one small. And of course, somewhere you can hide your keys and your valuables. And of course, as you extend all the way to the center console, again, you have a deep console where you can actually hide your valuables and actually put your keys, your cell phone, and even your wallet. So away from prying eyes, which is very, very important. Now, let's move on to the instrument binnacle. Now, this is where matters get interesting because I should think that right now we're in the era of the digital cockpit. But now, what you now have done is fuse the analog dials with the digital cockpit display. So basically, on the left-hand side, you do have the tachometer. On the right-hand side, you have the speedometer. And in between the two, you do have the fuel and the temperature gauges. And in between, you do have a monochrome display that gives you all the vital information that you so desire when you're driving this Hyundai Tucson. So if the door is open, the range, when the service interval that is due, any critical information that the engine perceives is important to the driver is displayed right here on this particular cockpit. Again, the design is amazing. The italics are clear and precise. You don't need to struggle to see what is happening inside because the italics are so clear and with the background of blue and red again gives this car that je ne sais quoi. We keep on talking about on cars the big boy Trev. As you can see, the steering wheel as well, very comfortable. It has leather strapped as well, just giving it a very smooth and comfortable feel on the hands. Of course, it has satellite buttons on the left hand side. Anything to do with this multimedia information system is possible. So voice control, controlling the volume, picking up your phone, hanging up, and of course, the different modes. So the source mode, so USB, Bluetooth, auxiliary, you name it, able to toggle through the different settings on this left hand side of the satellite buttons. On the right hand side, anything to do with this multimedia information system, this particular display, and of course, cruise control control that comes as standard in this Hyundai Tucson. And let's talk about the seats on the Hyundai Tucson. I'm six foot one, and this seat is set to my position, and I can tell you, I'm as comfortable as it can be. Electronically adjusted power seats, both front, can allow you to adjust the seat to your best support. And of course, you have to have lumbar support as well, so that your back is relaxed during long drives. Again, you can adjust the steering wheel as well. You have both tilt and telescopic, so depending on your height, you're able to adjust the seating preference to ensure that you have full command of this Hyundai Tucson, be it on and off-road. Again, as I can tell you, what they've done is to ensure that the Hyundai Tucson has plenty of cubby holes and spaces all over the place. Door bins, you do have a glove compartment, with plenty of stuff and of course you do have wireless charging i mentioned earlier but the question still remains how good is the space at the back let's move to the back and see the sitting position the space the practicality of the boot and then you go out and drive this hyundai tucson now moving over to the back you can see that big boy trev is very comfortable i'm six foot one and the front seat has been set to my setting when i sit at the back there's plenty of leg and headroom and that is so important because even taller passengers can enjoy the back seat of the hyundai tucson not forgetting the middle passengers as well because the transmission tunnel is not intrusive you're able to sit here quite comfortably and they can actually spread their legs and be able to relax and enjoy the ride of this particular vehicle and of course you do have headrest which also adds that extra value in as far as giving comfort is concerned. And not forgetting whiplash as well. Now, in case you're just only sitting two people, you can, you know, remove the armrest and you're able to extract it and make sure that you're able to sit very comfortably. And of course, you can sip your drinks right here because you have two cup holders. If you're wondering, how will I charge my device? Well, I mean, the Tucson, well, you do have a USB port over here, so you're able to charge your device as long as you're in the Tucson, you're able to do that, including the ones in the front. So there are more than enough sockets to ensure that your devices are charged at any 
a given time. And of course, this particular vehicle has anchor isofix to put your child seat, which is very important uh, to secure your baby in case of an accident. So you're able to do that. Remember, babies are supposed to be at the back. Any, any child that's below 12 years, the position is at the back. So the child seats are supported. And of course, the anchor points ensure that they lock in and ensure that your baby is safe at any given time. Time. So let's move to the back and see what the Hyundai Tucson is all about. So as I open the soft touch opening again, it reveals a massive boot space, 400 liters of space that can carry up to five large suitcases. And of course, the boot clip is flat, so you're able to remove and put in anything inside there. If you're a person who loves carrying groceries, gunias and sacks, then also easy entry and exit is possible courtesy of this Hyundai Tucson. Again, if you want much more space, then the rear seats can actually fold flat. 60 40 configuration, if you have oblong or tall ob objects, you can actually put the right hand side of the seat so you're able to accommodate anything like a fridge, a wardrobe, right here in this Hyundai Tucson. So the practicality is very important. And obviously, you have plenty of space. It has a full size tire underneath over here, and then you have plenty of spaces where you can actually put your jack, your valuables, and so many other stuff that are right here in the Hyundai Tucson. But it's time for us to head out on the road and feel the power of this two liter turbo diesel, then go off road and find out whether the Hyundai Tucson is what you need. So guys, today we are sampling this high power diesel the Hyundai Tucson, the high spec version. And remember on Kazi Big Boy Trev, we actually tested the petrol version. Now this one is special, why? Because it has a lot of power and a lot of enhancements courtesy of this diesel engine. So let's talk about this particular diesel engine. So it's a two liter, 16 valve, four cylinder, turbocharged diesel that produces 180 horsepower and 402 newton meters of torque, which on sport mode, put my foot down like this, <laughs> it pulls all the way to 4,000 very easily because this turbo charger has a variable geometry turbo that allows this car to spool from as low as 1,700 RPM all the way to 3,500, making it have a very good torque band. So mid grunt is amazing and all that power is sent to the four wheels courtesy of a six speed automatic transmission. And of course, paired to that, is a hitch truck all-wheel drive system that distributes torque to all four wheels depending on the situation and that is something you're going to test out later as you do the off-road segment now this particular gearbox allows this car to exploit the full potential of this 180 horsepower and still be able to return to you a fuel economy figure of about 12.1 kilometers to the liter which is very good for a diesel because on a full tank probably at 62 liters you'll probably be able to get what 400 500 kilometers with ease and that's the beauty of driving this hyundai tucson now this particular platform that we are driving on is also based on the santa fe elantra and many others within the hyundai lineup and of course it's built on a scalable architecture basically when i say scalable architecture all these brands have similar attributes so the chassis is lengthened and expanded to accommodate such a body. Now, that again also helps in cost and bringing the development of cost down because remember at the end of the day, most of these car companies normally use these chassis to ensure that they still retain their structural rigidness. And of course, the safety aspect of this particular vehicle is enhanced. Now, speaking of handling and safety, this particular vehicle in front actually has McPherson struts and at the back, multi-link suspension that helps this car to be planted on any given surface and of course with the long stroke suspension with 172 millimeters of ground clearance allows this car to do a little bit of light off-roading so if the kind of person who likes to go outside Nairobi to your shamba uh, perhaps it's an Amaram area then you'll be at ease because also the hitch track uh, functionality which is the only drive function will ensure that you have maximum grip even during off-road situation but in this category we know that 
players and people who are buying in this category want safety for their family. So what safety features does this particular vehicle have? So you have a mixture of active and passive safety features. So from the active front is anything that helps you avoid an accident. So what am I talking about? Anti-lock braking system, vehicle stability control, which is the umbrella that controls ABS, brake assist, electronic brake force distribution, and of course many other things, traction control, that also ensures that you are on the right track. Now in case all air brakes to stand, you can rely on a five-star safety rating on this particular body cell that dissipate impact energy away from the passenger cell to ensure that you and your family are quite safe while in the Tucson. Everybody wants a safe car and the Tucson definitely has its marks up there with the best of the rest. But the question still remains, is it able to do a bit of off-roading? Can it be able to match the likes of the Mazda CX-5, the Subaru Forester, the Nissan x and of course the perennial king, the Toyota RAV4? We're gonna just find out right now as we go for our off-road section, courtesy of Kazu Big Boy Trev. So we just veered off the highway into the beaten track and now trying to find out whether this particular vehicle is capable of doing a bit of light off-roading because remember people in this particular category are not only looking for a vehicle that can do on-road it can also do a bit of off-roading so good grip and of course you're able to do your off-road stuff when you're going to shags or to your shamba on the weekend so what ingredients makes this hyundai tucson what it is a vehicle that is so desirable so let's start with its all-wheel drive system. It's called the H-Track system and it's paired to this six-speed automatic. So basically, it's a system that is predominantly front-wheel drive and all the power is sent to the front wheels depending on the situation because it has quite a number of sensors. So in front, the power will be sent, especially on tarmac, it will sense the wheel speed and you'll be able to you know, direct the power to the front wheels to encourage fuel efficiency. But if the situation deems it necessary for you uh, to need a bit of grip at the rear wheel, say when you're in a loose surface, then the traction system will move it all the way to the rear wheels to ensure that you have maximum grip depending on it. And even during hard acceleration, the power will shift from the front to the rear to ensure that it gives you a sporty sort of feeling, especially on sport mode, and you'll be able to, you know, direct the torque all the way to the back. And that is so important. Now, ground clearance important in this particular category, you do have exactly 172 millimeters of ground clearance to ensure that you can get off the beaten track quite easily because you're not you know going through boulders and things but on a, off the beaten track it's not too bad um, again the suspension up front it's a long stroke mcpherson strut standard at the back you have multi-link rear suspension that allows this car to have good wheel articulation in some certain areas and of course you're able to go through mud rut and rough surfaces with ease without getting stressed or anything and that is so important because in this software category remember we have the likes of the Mazda CX-5 the Subaru Forester with its proven symmetrical all drive system and all these brands have their own propriety systems that allows them to go on the beaten track but for Hyundai it's all about efficiency and making sure that the vehicle has maximum traction at any given time there are no selectable uh, off-road modes but the sensor the system actually controls all the traction that you need when you're doing some off-roading and even the steering is not too bad it's light and of course during low speed you're able to go through the beaten track quite easily you don't need to struggle and you know put steering wheel on on different trajectories because you're able to know where the nose is pointing at any given time amazing stuff courtesy of Hyundai a bit of off-roading is good but the question still remains what's the value driven proposition of this Hyundai is it able to fight with the likes of the Mazda CX-5 or the Volkswagen Allspace Tiguan or the Subaru Forester? The Hyundai Tucson can be imported from markets like Singapore and United Kingdom. Prices start from an average of Kenya shillings 2.5 to 3 million DT paid and drive home. In terms of maintenance, minor service costs about 20,000 shillings and major at about 35 to 40,000 Kenya shillings. Finally, these are the things that you need to look out for when you're searching to purchase a grey import Hyundai Tucson. Number one, any signs of engine transmission sluggishness requires transmission service by a qualified garage. Number two, malfunctioning air conditioning unit due to low levels of AC refrigerant. Number three, any signs of engine knocking sound to a vehicle that's over 150,000 kilometers on the clock. It is caused by worn out controls, which may lead to catastrophic engine failure in future. 
So you'll be rest assured that this particular car is in a very competitive stage and what it's offering right now is absolute value for money. So do you reckon this particular car tickles your fancy? Send us your thoughts as seen on the social media notes below. We'll get back to you next week with the feedback. But before I sign out, how do you catch Cars Big Boy Trap in case you miss this particular episode? Well, we're on social media and on YouTube, so you can catch us with this uh, letter, CBBT underscore TV, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So you can send us your thoughts, your comments, and we'll try and improve the show as the days go by. But that's it. Thank you so much for joining us on Cars Big Boy Trev. It's Big Boy Trev. Drive safe and be safe.